this is good all right um, welcome students parents teachers principals supervisors uh, dr. Kane board of ed members to the opening of the 2017 fall superintendents gallery and while and while we are here to celebrate the amazing artworks produced by these young people art isn't just about drawing painting and skills needed to create art sure that is important but also art education is much more Research has shown how important an, an arts education can be for the emotional and intellectual development of the child. The arts encompass the 21st or 20th century skills of creativity, communication, critical thinking, and collaboration, which will help develop these young students into independent thinkers who can think analytically, communicate effectively, and work efficiently and cordially with their peers across any subject and any field they choose to pursue. The arts foster self-worth, self-confidence, and connect people to their communities. Students who take art throughout their high school career are more successful um, in math and sciences, and on average score 200 points better on their SATs. No other subject teaches the whole child more than the arts. I am honored to work with some rock star art teachers, and I know how proud we all are of each and every one of you students who represent the finest Queen Anne's County has to offer. I congratulate you, and I'm excited to hear all about your artworks. Before we start, I would like to say special thanks to you, Kim Adams, who was instrumental in putting together this program, and to Def Jeff Strait, um, who is always a huge supporter of the arts, and our interim communication specialist, Dr. Pearson, for taking pictures and recording the events for QAC TV. Parents, if you share your email address with Mr. Strait or Dr. Pearson, they can email your child picture directly to you. So you just have to get them your email. Oh, we'll go door to door. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, how we usually work it, if you're new to all this, is we usually start with elementary schools, and we move to the middle schools, and we finish with our two high schools. Um, we're going to call each uh, school's student, their teacher or representative, their principals, if they're here, um, to come forward and share their story behind their art and the artist while the student's work is projected on the screen. Um, Following each presentation, each artist, teacher, and principal or school representative will take a group photo with Dr. Kane and the board members. After all students have presented their work, there will be a final group photo. And without further ado, we will start. First, we, we have from Bayside Elementary School, Sarah Miles, our teacher, Cindy Pajaza. I'm Louisa Welch, principal at Bayside Elementary. Mrs. Pedraza was unable to be with us tonight, but I have a statement that she would like to share with Sarah this evening, because we're very proud of her. Mrs. Pedraza says, I'm so happy to share with you my student artist, fifth grader, Sarah Miles. I was happy that Sarah was able to complete her piece in time to share with everyone, because Sarah is such a talented artist and so deserving of being recognized for her ability and hard work. Sarah is the youngest in her family. She lives with her mom, dad, big brother, and their dog. Outside of school, Sarah enjoys riding her bike with friends and playing volleyball and baseball. When she grows up, Sarah would like to be a dentist, but for now, her favorite subject in school is art. Can you tell? The, this piece is actually a two-part project that fifth graders have been working on as they were inspired by artist Georgia O'Keeffe and the geometric designs and patterns of the Navajo Indians in their striking blankets. Fifth graders began creating the background piece using rulers and pencils to draw geometric patterns, which they then colored with markers in a limited color palette inspired by the earth tones most commonly found in the blanket design of the Navajo that we closely explored. <coughs> Once the blanket, piece, blanket style pieces were complete, students learned of the graceful animal skulls and their soft yet high contrasting values that struck Georgia O'Keeffe on her desert walks which she ominously juxtaposed against her colorful, colorful Southwest landscapes. Students learned about the importance of good observational skills, taking in all of the many details to include in their artwork as they drew from real deer skulls. Looking to see and draw what we actually see and not what we know is not as easy as it sounds. Once every anatomical detail was drawn, we moved on to shading, which gave the drawings a more three-dimensional and realistic look. Hatching, cross-hatching, and blending stumps are a lot for fifth graders to manage, but certainly worth all the effort it took to add just the right, right amount of graphite, but not too much. I'm sure you heard that a lot. 
Sarah is the first of the fifth graders to complete the final step, which was to cut her deer skull drawing out to mount on top of her blanket design. Because she came into the art room to finish her work while giving up her recess time so that we could share her work this evening. Since third grade, Sarah has always been a bubbly and positive student to have in class, giving her very best during each and every art class. She is such an artistically talented young lady, and I hope that she, as she moves on, she continues to take art classes in middle school and high school so that you can continue to hone your talents and continue to create beautiful works such as this wonderful piece. And we are very proud of you at Bayside, so congratulations. Awesome. Um, next we have from uh, Centerville Elementary School, Nevaeh Castro, art teacher Nancy Adams. Good evening. Um, Nevaeh Castro was not able to make it this evening, but we're going to celebrate her art and uh, hear some great things about her anyway. Nevaeh is a second grader at Centerville Elementary School. She is a hard-working student that enjoys learning new things at school. Nevaeh lives with her parents and two younger siblings. Her brother is four and her sister is 10 months old. Nevaeh is respectful about being the oldest child and enjoys helping her little sister feel better whenever she's feeling bad. Nevaeh also likes to color with her brother so she can help him learn to work carefully. When Nevaeh gets home, her favorite thing to do is to make pictures and different things to give to her family as gifts. Nevaeh's work on display here shows her careful planning and practicing skills. When we started this lesson, Nevaeh went home and practiced drawing flowers with her family. She explored some new ways to draw flowers and practice solid overlapping. Nevaeh was eager to try some new blending techniques that were part of this lesson, and her diligent practicing is strongly evident in her lovely artwork. First, we studied several Van Gogh sunflower artworks and then practiced filling the page with our ideas. When ready, students drew on black paper with a pencil eraser and then went over their lines to keep with a white oil pastel. Next, color was applied and students were encouraged to blend at least two colors in all spaces. Once their artwork looked mostly complete, the final step was to carefully outline all shapes in black oil pastel and lastly sign their name. As Nevaeh worked, she carefully planned and drew her vase and flowers. Nevaeh used rich blended colors throughout her work. This careful work, along with her practice color blending, really make Nevaeh's flower still life outstanding and quite interesting to look at. Congratulations to Nevaeh for her awesome artwork. Next, from Church Hill Elementary School, we have Ava Walls. Her art teacher is Cassandra Hostler. And Mrs. Hirschberger would like to come on up, please. Mrs. Wilhelm couldn't be here, but we're lucky that Mrs. Hirschberger was able to come. It is my true pleasure to introduce Ava Walls, a fourth grader at Churchill Elementary School in Mrs. Enzer's class. Ava is a gifted and talented artist. This was evident since I met her in kindergarten. Her level of creativity, quality craftsmanship, patience, and her dedication to her art is easy to see. Ava is able to take a complicated subject matter and break it down into small goals, doing her best on the smallest aspect and turning it into a, create, uh, a very big, wonderful masterpiece. Ava is an amazing part of Churchill Elementary School. Ava has a sister, Riley, who is in kindergarten, and she also is show showing signs of creativity already. Ava is super busy. She is a former member of Churchill's famous jump rope club and our girls ready to run club. She also enjoys playing basketball, painting and cooking and also reading. Ava, Ava is special beyond <clears throat> just being an amazing artist. She is also a very unique, loving person. We talked about many, many things. We talked about being thankful because of this season. Ava was very quick to respond how thankful she is for her, her um, grandmother, her uncle, and even her art teacher, which if you know me, that made me cry. Um, <laughs> I am thankful for Ava. 
In the past five years, I have seen her explore her artistic personality and make a positive impact on all of those around her. Ava has been an art room helper regularly for the past three years and gives up her recess time to be what I like to call the assistant in the art room. Her patience is noted as she works with kindergarten and acts as an amazing role model. Ava's, landscape, Ava's artwork is a landscape of fall birch trees. The art is actually two paintings in one combined. The background is a watercolor with a huge colorful sky. We use salt on the sky to create a textured background. And then the trees are made up of bark. In order to create the bark, we used cardboard instead of paint brushes dragging along our paper. Then it was all chopped into pieces, which sometimes makes students nervous, but she put it back together in a clever, wonderful landscape. Ava was able to establish depth in her artwork by changing the size and placement of her details. Her sophisticated problem solving can be seen in her very colorful landscape. When Ava grows up, she plans to be an art teacher. Words cannot express how that made me feel, but I'll keep it together. <laughs> Ava will have the same impact on me. <clears throat> Ava will have the same impact she has on, on me to all the students that come her way. I am very, very proud of you. I can't tell you how excited I am to have you in five years, so I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, next from Graysonville Elementary School is Audrey, Audrey Fleshman. Um, Megan Spence is her teacher. Third graders at Graysonville Elementary started this school year off with a new project entitled Crazy Line Cactus. This is a new project for third grade that involves reviewing and learning lines that we use in art and the environment every day. Tonight, we have the pleasure of viewing Audrey Fleshman's artwork. According to Mrs. Spence, her art teacher, Audrey is a joy to have in class each week. She brings well thought out ideas into the art room, precise craftsmanship skills, and an understanding beyond her grade level of each project and skill set learned in class. In her picture, Audrey displayed an expressive use of color that can be portrayed as being happy and excited. The movement inside the cactus draws the viewer's eye to the picture using several wavy lines that bend and curve inside the shape of the cactus. After using several bright colors to fill in each shape inside of the cactus, Audrey added small spikes around the cactus. She chose her own background color with paints. The color was supposed to symbolize something about the way she feels or her favorite color. To complete the project, she added a flower as texture that makes the cactus pops. Looking at Audrey's paper, you can tell she took a great deal of time and had a lot of patience to complete the project. It required her to use amazing drawing and coloring skills, which I think she did to perfection. Ms. Spence has taught Audrey since kindergarten. She has always been the student who wants to know and learn more to improve her skills in class. Her artwork is always very well organized and thought out which reflects her attitude toward learning in school. Besides being a star-studded student in art, Audrey does have a few other hobbies. She enjoys gymnastics, swimming, reading, and coloring. Her favorite subject is art, while her favorite color is dark blue. She likes monkeys and unicorn, but does have two dogs named Tucker and Buckwheat. Audrey also has an older sister named Emma who is in fifth grade and with us today, who is just as talented in art as Audrey is. Congratulations, Audrey.
Next, from Kennard Elementary School, we have Juliana Rodriguez. Her teacher is Jackie Wheeler. Uh, I asked Juliana a few things about her likes, and um, she's a fourth grader at Kennard Elementary School. She's nine years old. She comes from a family of four. Um, I asked her what her favorite color is. Instead of saying, you know, red or blue, she says magenta. <laughs> <sighs> That's the sign of a true artist, magenta. She has a lucky number eight. She has two dogs, six birds. And um, she likes to draw. It's one of her favorite things to do. Her favorite classes in school are science and art. I asked her what she wanted to be when she grows up, and she says, I'm not sure yet. Um, and she does like to read. Uh, the Wayside series is one of her favorites. This year in fourth grade, the fourth grade studied the art of Mexico, particularly Mexico's Days of the Dead, a Mexican holiday celebrated on the 1st and 2nd of November in connection with the Catholic holidays of All Saints Day and All Hallows Day. Sugar skulls, which this is up here, Sugar Skulls uh, represent a departed soul and was to honor the return of a particular spirit, normally a family member. The term is most often applied to a decorative or edible sugar skull made uh, a skull made of sugar or chocolate. Sugar Skull art reflects the folk art style of big, happy smiles, colorful icing, sparkly tin, and glittery adornments. My students were designed a sugar skull using contrasting colors and lots of patterns. I thought that Juliana's sugar skull captured the essence of the days of the dead with her intensely decorated skull of wonderful colors and multiple use of patterns. Juliana is a wonderful art student, always doing her best at whatever she sets out to do. I am proud to have her in my class and I can't wait to see what she does next. Congratulations. Our principal is here. Next, we have from Ken Island Elementary School, Isabella Buckman. Isabella is a second grader at Ken Island Elementary School. She lives at home with her mom, dad, brother, and sister. She has plans to become a doctor when she grows up and, jo and enjoys drawing at home and on the weekend. Isabella has created a fall sunrise for her Vincent Van Gogh inspired fall landscape. Her work features warm colors in the land and cool colors for the sky. Isabella has chosen to incorporate pink into her sky to imitate the colors she imagines in a sunrise. Isabella used a mix of crayons and watercolor to mimic the brushwork, brushwork and style of Vincent Van Gogh. Congratulations, Isabella. Your work is spectacular. From Manapeak Elementary School, Thomas Stokes. Teacher is Nicole Drennan. Thomas is our artist from Mattapique Elementary School. He is in kindergarten this year in Mrs. Swindell's class. Thomas lives at home with his mom, dad, and little sister. He has a dog named Henry and three ducks whose names are Zippy, Butter, and Ash. 
In school, Thomas says he likes to do any kind of craft in any subject if he's able to make something with his hands. And he enjoys drawing and coloring at home as well. Outside of school, Thomas likes to play tag, spend time with his family, and mostly play with his dog, Henry. For this project, kindergarten students learned about and looked at various types of line. After practicing how to draw these lines, students then chose and painted lines horizontally across their paper using black temper paint. We then learned about warm and cool colors, and students chose one of those color schemes to add around their lines using crayon. For this project, I was incredibly impressed at how Thomas painted the lines on his art. Not only did he take his time, but he concentrated on painting carefully so that his artwork looked incredibly neat. Once his painting was dry, Thomas chose warm colors as his color scheme and very carefully added his color with, co with crayons to fill all the white spaces. Thomas even chose to come in for some art enrichment time to make sure all of his right white spaces were filled and that the colors looked very bold and bright. I am very proud of Thomas for all of his effort that he shows in the art room and appreciate his very positive attitude and creativity. Good job, Thomas. Next, we have from Southersville Elementary School, Kimberly Alfaro Reyes. Again, taught by Cassie Hostler. So I'm sorry Mr. Walls had to leave, so I am so pleased to present Kimberly. Kimberly is a third grader at Southersville Elementary School, and if I had to pick one word to describe her, it would be sunshine, and I wouldn't hesitate on it. Every time Kimberly comes into the art room, she shows the world how special she is and how special those people around her are. She has a smile, she cares about others, and one thing I especially like is when she quietly leaves her seat, comes up to me and whispers something incredible about art or the process or about an artist she knows. She's simply amazing. Kimberly has one sister, Ashley, who is in the sixth grade at Sellersville Middle School, whom I also taught and who is also a gifted artist as well. Kimberly is very, very busy. She enjoys playing soccer. She plays outside with her sister. She likes playing Wii, and she likes to play with her dolls as well. In school, she loves science, math, and using her Chromebook. Something tells me she should be a STEAM teacher someday. Kimberly's creativity goes beyond the visual arts as she is also a writer. She enjoys reading and writing about folk tales as well. When Kimberly grows up, she is planning on being a nurse so that she can help sick people. Her loving heart, positive attitude, and her smile would help anybody feel better. Kimberly has used a variety of supplies in art, but painting is her favorite. She loves art and artists so much she cannot narrow down who she likes best. Kimberly's artwork is a study on color, as well as a look inside of the artists themselves. Kimberly used only the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, to create her artwork. We studied the color spectrum and how colors have relationships one with one another. If you mix the primary colors, you'll get the secondary colors, and that is seen in her artwork. So with three colors of paint, she made six. If you look closely, she's also described herself in her artwork. She says that she is kind, helpful, caring, fun, creative, and she's soaring, which is Southersville's motto. She is definitely aligned with the Southersville soaring, and she definitely is an amazing, amazing artist and an amazing person. She soars every day, no matter where she is. I'm very proud of you. Next from Centerville Middle School is Riley Sutherland. Her teacher is Valerie Ortiz. Hi, 
Um, this is Riley Sutherland. She's an eighth grader. Uh, in the past, I had her sister Grace, and who was a very talented artist as well. And so I was extremely excited to find out that Riley was finally in my class, uh, her last uh, last year with us. Um, Besides art, Riley is, um, her hobbies include drawing, doodling, writing stories, singing. She's a very amazing um, singer and she's also in our choir. Um, playing with animals, acting, making movies, uh, using figurines, role playing, sculpting with clay, crafts, math, mostly algebra, math, and chemistry is fun also. It's good. Uh, making up different characters, listening to music, and reading. So you could tell she's an extremely creative uh, student and young lady. Um, the project that we, uh, the eighth graders worked on were self-portraits, uh, and they were working with value, shading with graphite, and uh, concerned about finding correct facial proportions. Uh, in addition, we also looked um, at the self-portraits of Frida Kahlo and how she used her background in the negative space uh, in court incorporating symbols that um, expressed her feelings and her personality. So the students were all required to draw their self-portrait using correct facial proportions, using some value scales, and to incorporate at least three symbolic images that explain something about themselves. And I think Riley did such an amazing job with her portrait. Uh, she did a wonderful job capturing her likeness using the correct proportions and value. And I remember her trying to figure out the best way to draw her freckles. Um, so <laughs> that's always a challenge. Um, she also created a dynamic composition by the way she layered and placed these uh, symbolic images in the background. Um, it's not, we can't really tell when you go out there, you have to um, take a look. She did that, you could tell the acting, the theater, the music, and my, the favorite, favorite part that I absolutely loved about this was the mouse peeking up from behind her hair, um, being drawn by a pencil. I just thought the composition, the way she arranged all the objects in the, in the negative space, just not only captured her likeness in the self-portrait, but you really got to see her true personality. So I just thought she did a delightful job and um, very proud of you, and thank you for letting me be with it. Next, we have eighth grader Harrison Raska from Mattapique Middle School. His teacher is Lucia Calloway. Thank you. Good evening. Harrison. Hmm. Harrison Raska is an eighth grader attending Mattapique Middle School. His interests include baseball, photography, and playing the piano. He lives in Stevensville. He has three brothers, two sisters, and a pet dog. His creative composition is a drawing of his dream tree house after the class studied the works of the American architect Frank Lloyd Wright. His colors are vivid, and his creation of vine-covered trees are captivating. And in fact, if you look at it, the, the trees are sort of gnarly. I just love the way he did it. He states that his house creation is located on the planet Endor where the tiny houses blend into their surroundings. And Endor comes from? Star Wars. Star Wars, okay. <laughs> he is a compassionate and kind young man who is a friend to all and an absolute pleasure to teach. On behalf of all of us at Mattapique Middle, congratulations, Harrison. Next, from Stevensville Middle School, we have seventh grader Makai Johnson, and his teacher is Holly Schrader. Hi. Hello. This is Makai. He's 13 years old. He's in the seventh grade. He has three sisters and two brothers. That is not his artwork, actually. Oh. Just for the record. You're right. It's There we go. All right. 
Um, for fun, he usually plays basketball and he likes to chill with his family. He also likes to eat, apparently, a lot in his free time. Okay. Um, his favorite subject is math, which I think explains why his artwork is so outstanding. Accuracy and precision when drawing in one or two point perspective or working on a math problem are equally important for success. The skills one uses in math can sometimes translate nicely into art and vice versa. The assignment was for the students to draw their name graffiti style using one or two point perspective, which we had just practiced in class. I also gave them the option to freestyle their names, which helps kids that don't always do as well with rulers. They, <laughs> um, they had, but Mike Mackay obviously does very well with a ruler. Uh, they had to include at least one splitter arrow found in many real works of graffiti art, and their letters had to have three dimensions. Mackay had a vision of what he wanted to do for his name right away. Once he had drawn it all out, it was just a matter of using his vanishing points correctly to help him make such a complicated design successful. Although there were many wonderful works of art at school to choose from, I felt that Mackay's artwork truly encapsulated the assignment and did so with creativity and a unique style. Way to go, Mackay. Next from Sellersville Middle School, we have sixth grader Angie Nareva. Uh, her teacher is Vicki Bachmiller. The part of Vicki Bachmiller will be played by Sean Kenna this evening. Miss um, Bachmiller was at school this morning. Uh, she wasn't feeling well, but she was desperately trying to get here, and at 9 o'clock she was out of voice, so we sent her home, so she wouldn't have been able to do this part tonight anyway. But she wrote down some stuff for me to say about you. Good? All right. Ms. Bachmiller says that uh, Angie has been a great student with her for two years. It's been her pleasure, and she is truly an exceptional talent, has truly exceptional talent, and is truly an old soul. I don't think that was meant to be an insult. I think it's like a positive thing, like you're very mature for, okay, good. All right, I'm just saying what she said. Uh, she talked to Angie, and Angie said she lives at home with her sister, mom, and dad. What you will find pretty amazing about this young lady, they speak three languages at home, Russian, or she speaks three languages, or learning them, I guess, Russian, English, and German. Uh, her extended family lives in Russia. If you are really trilingual, you are going to be a powerful, powerful lady in the world. You should keep that going. <laughs> Uh, she says she really likes Sellersville Middle School and especially art. Uh, she just likes being creative and expressing herself through her artwork. She really liked this activity, be, um, which with the sun, because of the way they did it, they used non-traditional materials. So instead of paper, they used plates. Instead of paint, they used tissue paper. And they also used Mod Podge to make it more vibrant, which I'm going to ask you about in a second. Start thinking of how to talk about it. The idea uh, came from Hispanic cultures, and they made coconut masks out of it. So since this show is going to be viewed by millions of people there on that camera, this is basically the ESPN of the art world. Millions of artists are going to be looking in. And some of the people in the crowd here today don't know what Maj Podge is. So this is your interview moment on big screen TV. Tell us what Maj Podge is. It's like um, some kind, like, it's almost like glue, but when it dries, it makes like this... Um, shiny layer of uh, color, yeah. That is awesome. We are very proud of you, young lady. Good job. Now we move on to the high schools. Um, we have 11th grader Sean Hobbs from Ken Island High School, and his teacher is Andrea Schulte. Hi, I'm Andrea Schulte. This is Sean. He's a pretty amazing kid, and I know a lot of the teachers interview their students about things that they like. I did not interview Sean, but I asked his peers about him. <laughs> you nervous? <laughs> no. All great things, I promise. So Caroline Herlibus 
says, Sean is extremely passionate, but he doesn't seem that way at first. He asks a lot of questions, and I think he doesn't know what he's doing. But uh, then his work progresses, and I'm like, wow, where did that come from? This is my second art class with Sean. Every painting gets better and better. He continues to amaze me and all the other peers with his strong work ethic and care and compassion. Not bad, right? OK. OK, there's a ton here. I'm not going to read them all. Uh, the next one, Sean is pretty quiet, but when he does talk, it is always kind. I would agree with that. He is sincerely one of the most genuinely nice people I've ever met. Good job, Mom. He seems to work hard at everything he does in school, even with running. Uh, he is track, too. Uh, he is just a really nice guy, and I'm so happy that he is being recognized because he totally deserves it. Okay, one more. Sean Hobbs is extraordinarily dedicated to the process behind each artwork. It is not just the final product that motivates him, but the technique that goes into it. Sean is always engaged in class and eager to learn more about the artistic process. He never fails to impress me and his fellow classmates. I'm sure his artistic potential will serve him well in the future. I would agree with that too. So the challenge was we were learning about landscape perspective and depth. And there are five or six rules to achieve depth. And I would say that Sean has mastered most of them. The trick about this painting was it was all in pointillism, so lots of dots. And I asked Sean how many dots were in the painting. How many? I have no idea. Yeah, he lost track. <laughs> Maybe a million, I don't know. But his range of value, the color, the light source, it's all just beautiful. And he's a great student, and he's been a pleasure to have. So congratulations. And last, but certainly not least, from my school is 10th grader Jenna Hauser. And this work was actually done in my uh, colleague's class, uh, Tim Goodger, but I'm going to take a little credit for working with her a little bit. Um, I know Jenna very well as her JV volleyball coach. And the fact that she has this amazing passion for art, probably stronger than most kids I've seen in the 21 years I've been teaching. So this is what Tim had to say. For the past several years, I've partnered with the yearbook committee, giving this Lions Design assignment in pursuit of creative student artwork to include each in each year's yearbook. Throughout the years, students have submitted a variety of products ranging in style and quality. This piece is definitely the most realistic line design that I have ever gotten from any student. Jenna's use of line, accuracy and proportion, and matching the range of values gives her line lifelike textures and genuine presence. I first met Jenna in her freshman year in Fundamentals of Art and was immediately impressed by her excellent work ethic and dedication to perfection. This, along with a superior skill set, led Jenna to developing a variety of high quality works of art. This year, I was pleased to see Jenna enrolled in my life drawing class and to see her dedication and commitment produce tremendous artistic growth, as can be seen in this line design. As an artist, Jenna is very receptive to criticism and uses teacher recommendations to approve her work. She also shows great creativity in seeking meaningful solutions to design problems. A model student, Jenna not only excels academically with a 3.78 GPA, but is also an active member of our art club and the JV volleyball team. Furthermore, Jenna frequently pursues artistic growth and development beyond classroom requirements. This I know, because she always brings stuff in and shows me all this work. She works so much outside of the classroom to develop her own talent. Um, recently, she has been studying facial features and color applications independently, constantly staying one step ahead of the class. This is great practice as Jenna plans to attend art school, perhaps SCAD, after she graduates high school. Jenna Hauser is an excellent student, a wonderful person, and an outstanding artist. I can, I can vouch for that. Um, Jenna is really extremely kind. Um, as a coaching gift last year, she painted me a painting. I love it. It's hanging in my um, room. It's, it means a lot to me. And we made this big drawing of our, of our uh, seniors on the volleyball team last year, and I needed help because it was a lot. And Jenna came and stayed after with me and just put the work in and did awesome, and the girls were super excited about it. Um, it's been truly a pleasure to teach her, and I hope, again, I'm privileged enough to have her in my class again, and I hope one day to actually have her in my room, not just as part of my volleyball team. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
And this time, may we have Sarah? Yes. Bayside. Yep, we need to get a picture. And this is also here. And just on behalf of uh, Julia Alley, who's our supervisor who had surgery and is not here today, um, I'm Stephanie Zeiler and the lead teacher for the county. And I thank parents. I thank you for your support of your kids. Teachers, thank you for being awesome rock stars. I couldn't ask for a better group of people to work with. Uh, principals, thank you for supporting the arts. And thank you for continuing the superintendent's gallery. Absolutely. No thanks at all for me. I am absolutely thrilled to be here and I'm excited. This is my first, as you know, uh, Superintendent's Art Gallery and I'm so excited about it. I've seen such wonderful artwork and had a chance to speak with some of the students and some of the families. Thank you so much for supporting your students. You know, art is so important and I'm not going to go through a long thing because you sat here for a while, but I can remember being in elementary school and having a piece sent to the Baltimore Museum of Art and I mean, it probably was not the greatest thing but it just did so much for you know my potential and and it boosted me up and it made me feel good to know that I was being recognized for something that I didn't think I was particularly good at but it was it was important and um, and I know that that's what our students feel like today because we support the work that they do and we know that it's a passion for them we already heard about some of the wonderful things that are important about art and I'm particularly happy about that increase in the SAT score uh, as an educator so that's important but aside from that we know that art is important to connect students to other cultures and other people and other places and our own society so we absolutely have to continue the arts and increase our students participation in the arts and I just thank all of you our teachers our administrators of course our students and the families connected to those students. So thank you so much for coming out tonight. I hope you join us for some refreshments out in the hallway as you browse the, uh, the art that's up on the walls and hope that you have an absolutely wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you for being here. Before everyone runs out to uh, see your uh, pictures and possibly get interviewed, um, can we have one group picture with all the uh, students up here for... Mm -hmm. 